Hiya, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we are gonna do something exciting, something in the pursuit of power. Um, injectors, I'm gonna put some injectors for a Yaris 1.5 T-Sport. I'm gonna fit them into this, well, three of them, not all of them, there's four out of one of them. I'm gonna use three of them. And I'm gonna see, well, see if it makes any difference, good or bad. So, before we start, we've got some checks to check our base lines. Um, and I'm gonna do a second gear pull and I'm gonna see how cleanly it revs. So, tick over to rev limiter. Now, so if I go, press the, press the throttle all the way and just see how it revs and I'll compare it afterwards. So this is it now, so press it now. All right, so that's how quick it revs up as standard. So we'll see how it is with the injectors. So let's go and do our second gear pull for comparisons. So before we start, I think we need to give these a bit of a clean. These are the Yaris injectors that are going in. So if you remember on the other videos, this is my rig. This is for opening and closing the injectors whilst we're in the sonic bath. I'm not gonna explain it too much because I've done another video on it already. I'll just watch that, but yeah, I'm gonna set that up. Yes. Right, so there are the injectors in the sonic bath. There's our battery. There's our cycling thing. And if you turn that on, you can hear that the injectors are working. So there we've got a before and after of one that's not been in the sonic cleaner one that has been in the Sonic Cleaner. Now, obviously I can't show what the difference it's done inside, but that's the clean one on the tip. And that's the one that's not been cleaned. So, give it the best chance anyway. Now we just need to put them in the car, but we've got an issue. And that's that it's not stopped doing that for days. So one day I will put these in and we'll see what effects they have. But for now, nah. So this is our replacement injector for more powers and I'm pretty sure, I've not compared it to the ones out of the car yet, but I think we've got to change these O-rings. But the question that you might be asking is why am I putting injectors from a 1.5 litre into a 1 litre and you know, 100 horsepower car into a, or whatever, the 105 horsepower car into a 70 horsepower. Anyway, it's because I want 105 horsepower car in my, um, in my C1, in that other matching. Right, what it is, is this is the maths. So 1.5 litre, right, and we've got four injectors, equals 3, 0.375 of a litre per injector. This isn't accurate. I don't know the flow rates of the injectors. This is just very basic. So I'm only using three of them. So 0 0.375 times three is sort of like effectively using 1.125 litre engine worth of injectors, if it was the same. Now there's a lot more factors than that. But more importantly, the more important reason why I'm doing that is because, well, the, someone else said it would work. So I'm gonna try it. Um, admittedly, the person who said it would work, I think he's running a decap and an air intake and very high performance modifications that I'm not running. Um, so we'll see how it works with a catalyst still in place and whatever. So that is the explanation behind, behind why I'm going to try these injectors in the shit room. Right, so there's a one litre of beast and we want to change the injectors. So to do that, we've got to take this off to start with, which is really hard, which is our air box. And it's started raining, brilliant. That's our air filter, quite new. And um, we'll put that in a safe location. Now our injectors I don't know if you can see they are lovely and clean because I've already cleaned them but so you've got to take them 12 millis out and then we can move the fuel rail up and unplug this and then they just pull out so let's do that right so 12 millis away to take this off which is the fuel rail so we unbolt that and I mean this isn't that in depth if you look on the other videos I've done this already so I'm just going to pull these injectors out because 
as I have mentioned, it is raining, so I'm not going to spend too long doing it and filming it. Which is nice. Alright, so we we'll take them bolts out, put them in a safe place. And then we we'll take these plugs off, a little clip at the side, and then pull. Like that. And then we hope that the new injectors, or the replacement injectors, have the same clips which is a chance that they don't but this should have right and then we just pull this up when you pull this out one's stuck now this clip as well which I didn't mention you might want to pull this off and this one too which is on the back of the airbox because the wiring loom is causing it to be made difficult to pull it out. Anyway, I need two hands to do that. So anyway, I'm just going to pull all this out. Um, because like I said, I filmed it all already a few months ago. So I'm just going to do it and then I'll come back when they are out. When ready to pull the new ones in. Right, so these are the old injectors that are out. And if you might have noticed, one of the rubbers is in the old still. So I need to get someone to pull that out. Right, so... This is the original injector. This is the Yaris injector. And the plug is the same. The bottom, even though as you can see the one's got more holes in it, slightly bigger nozzle, but looks like it should fit all right. But the awning at the top is smaller. So I'm gonna try and see if this awning will fit on here. Um, so we'll try and do that. Right, so now I've put the O-rings off the old injectors on the new injectors. And it don't fit perfectly, but the lip inside, I would say, is big enough. But we'll soon find when it fires off and fucking sprays fuel everywhere. Um, but to put it in, put a bit of a, just put a bit of a lubricant on that to slide it into the injection, well, into fuel rail. A bit of WD-40 or something. So, anyway, I'm going to go and bang them in. I'm not going to film it, I'm not going to piss about it, I'm just going to put them in and then see if it works. Right, so the issue we've got is this gap here, this recess for the O-ring isn't wide enough. So I'm going to widen it by, well, putting it on a lathe really, demonstrate perfectly. Right, so we've got our tool and then we just turn it. Yes. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to do things, and I'm not saying this is the wrong way to do things, but it's definitely the wrong way to do things. Ow. Felt pretty good, that. I just twatted my fingernail. Let's come loose again. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? So the one on the right is the one that I've taken a bit off, which is actually the injector I'm not using, I'm just experimenting with. And now the O-ring does fit on much nicer. So, we're in with half a chance. So, we've turned it down and uh, widened that channel slightly. And now, the O-ring fits on much nicer. Much nicer fit. Hopefully that'll go in now, otherwise I've just fucked up a set of perfectly good injectors. So we're going to fit that. Right, so now the injectors do fit into the rail but I'll be honest with you I wouldn't recommend doing this and I don't fully trust them because if you see where this is there it's a bit blurred there the um, injectors thinner than what it should be for the size of the o-ring so the o-ring is sort of trying to roll down the injector a little bit um, so anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyway obviously and then uh, hope for the best Right, so, after all that, we have got the injectors in place, magic, and now we want to prime it and see if it leaks. Yes. Is it leaking or is that WD-40? WD-40. 
Well, the next thing is see if it runs. We'll leave the airbox off for now because it's probably going to be running rich anyway. Yeah, let's put it back together and see how it drives. Right, so let's try it with the airbox back on. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a hesitation on it, but that might be just because it's cold. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep an eye on it for pissing out. And I'm going to give that a go. And I'll report back. Well, say I'll report back. It'll be short because editing qualities and that. Right, so I'm the utmost confidence in this. I've had to put the injectors in a bag. and got a little shit socket set to put in the boot of the car. And also, yes, my me, um, me logo seems to have either fallen off or someone's nicked it because they wanted the logo. Can't blame them for that, really. But it just um, just doesn't look quite as good now. But yeah. All right. So now we're ready for a test drive. Hold on to our hats. Well, it seems to be ticking over all right. Uh, it is cold. Um, so let's see if it's any different. Um, I mean, bigger injectors, slightly bigger injectors. It's possibly the spray pattern why this might help. It might do nothing at all. The ECU might just read it and trim it out because um, well it might be within the trim parameters but we'll see um, if they were far too big the injectors then you know you risk overfueling badly misfiring you know even bore wash you know, bore wash well you know washing the oil marks off the bores washing the oil off um, but I don't think we'll come to that with this anyway let's go and try it so I've driven a couple of miles enough to get shit to warm and the only thing that I've really noticed so far is that it seems to tick over smoother. It definitely ticks over smoother, actually, which I'm actually very surprised about, uh, which I'll demonstrate now. Turn my wipers off. And it's, I mean, feeling the steering wheel, you can hardly feel anything, which before you could, really, with a three-cylinder thumping away. Um, and it seems to be a little bit more responsive so like i say, i haven't managed to put my foot down yet because i ain't got any roads where i can put my foot down but the takeoff for the difference between like not having the throttle on and then having the throttle on so i'm in second gear now cruising along and then put my foot down i mean yeah it's, it's not exactly fast but it does seem a little bit more responsive so i'm quite surprised about that i've also not got any engine lights on yet Second gear, again, go. Yeah, I also said that I compare how fast it revs up, but I haven't got a rev count to time it, but this is it with the new injectors. So it's not spluttering or anything, and it seems to be behaving itself so far. Right, so after a quick drive in it, it seems to be behaving itself. It's not, doesn't smell rich or anything like that, and it seems to tick over nice and smooth. Um, positives. The positives are that the car does actually seem, it does seem more responsive and a little bit quicker, but I haven't reviewed the footage to compare the before and after yet. Um, so it might just be a placebo, but no, I'm pretty sure that it is faster but the negatives are that one it's got bigger injectors slightly bigger injectors that are injecting a bit more fuel and it's probably having to trim to adjust for that um it doesn't seem to be running rich so i don't think it's going to cause any issues like the catalyst or issues with you know bore wash or anything like that but the main downside is the way that the injectors are fitted into the fuel rail um, isn't 100% trust with it. It should be okay, but I mean, it's not. It's not perfect. They're not a perfect fit. Um, so, like, a possible downside is you know, 
not setting on fire. Um, anyway, so would I recommend this? Um, no, because the pros probably aren't worth the cons. Um, you could make the injectors fit better, but this was a quick job, took about half an hour, and it's cocked on as you've seen. But anyway, I'm going to put the footage up of the before and after now, and we'll compare whether it is actually faster or not. And it's, well, that will tell the story, won't it? So, anyway, see you next time, bras. Peace out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, whatever that bullshit is, all that sort of stuff. And uh, see you next time.